Located on the southern tip of Africa, South Africa is 1.22 million square kilometers in size. Some of the major rivers are the Orange, Val, Tugela, Bree, Berg, Limpopo, Great Fish, Great Kai, Crocodile, and Olifant rivers. The west is characterized by winter rainfall, while the center, north, and east are summer rainfall zones. The country receives about 600 millimeters of rain per annum as compared to the world average of 800 millimeters. Indeed, South Africa is the 30th driest country in the world. Despite being a semi-arid country, South Africa has a well-developed agricultural sector. That is in no small way thanks to the use of irrigation. 1.4 million hectares of arable land is irrigated by a dual irrigation system. On the one hand, there is a large, well-developed commercial agricultural sector, and on the other, small-scale irrigation, both of which have seen considerable gains in sustainable intensification. For example, while maize, wheat, and dairy have decreased significantly over the last 20 years, production remains relatively constant. We are utilizing the best research that you can find in the world, uh, the best uh, irrigation designers, and of course our commercial farmers, together with our small-scale farmers, are very uh, good managers of their water use. Farmers can grow two or three crops a year, increase their yields and expand productive land, all thanks to irrigation. It's a two-seasonal business, agribusiness. Our winter crop is barley and wheat. And then we have the summer crop of which it's a soya bean and dry bean. 60% of available water nationwide is used in agriculture. In terms of irrigation, that 60% of water usage is utilized in flood irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, make nice systems, and micro irrigation. Although only 12% of arable land in South Africa is under irrigation, this farmed area produces 30% of the country's crops. And that relatively small portion of irrigated land accounts for 12% of the entire continent's agriculture under irrigation. About 90% of the country's fruit and wine is produced under irrigation. These are export products that generate foreign exchange for South Africa. Agriculture exported 160 billion rand uh, worth of uh, fruit and grains uh, to the rest of the world. And, um, about 30% of that was from irrigated agriculture. In order to manage South Africa's water resources, the government has divided the country into nine water management areas. The Department of Water and Sanitation manages and receives payments for the use of irrigated water from farmers, except in the case of subsistence farmers growing food for their own consumption. Water resources in the majority of the country's river basins are fully allocated. One solution to this is transfer schemes, which transport water between catchments. Government policy, past and present, has played a key role in developing the irrigated agricultural sector in South Africa. The country has over 500 government dams with a combined capacity of about 15 million Olympic-sized swimming pools, there are 49 large irrigation schemes, 315 small irrigation schemes, and over 8,000 kilometers of canals. The government's irrigation strategy encompasses water management, revitalization, and expansion. We have been uh, supporting the revitalization of various irrigation schemes, the Falhat in the Northern Cape, the Tawung in the Northwest, Makatini and KZN, several of the ones in Limpopo, several of the ones in Eastern Cape, and, and many more that I, I haven't mentioned. 
One of the irrigation schemes in South Africa that has been undergoing rehabilitation is Falharts, which offers a case study in large-scale irrigation. The irrigation scheme is the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere. Roughly 399 million cubic meters of water is delivered to farmers per annum in this region. Approximately 1,200 farmers benefit from a consistent supply of water for their pecan nuts, lucerne, wheat, barley, corn, and peanuts. With this type of, of scheme and the amount of water and the amount of uh, infrastructure that exists, um, it makes it possible for farmers to, to farm in areas that without it, nothing would have been happening here. Uh, and now you have an area that is thriving. One of the commercial farmers who benefits from the Falhart scheme is Stefan Smith, who produces pecan nuts for export. The annual rainfall on Falhart is around about 400 millimeters per year. Um, if we have a look at these trees that we're sitting in between, the uh, big pecan nut tree, more or less between 600 and 800 liters of water per day that it consumes, so 400 millimeters per annum. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be enough to get a, a, a economical yield on the pecan nuts. Despite this level of development, farmers face several challenges operating in a water-scarce country. These include climate change and drought, and water loss as a result of aging infrastructure and increased evaporation. As weather patterns change, farmers are starting to adapt. For those farmers um, I mean, who are in the western side of the country and the fact that I mean, the um, rainfall distribution is decreasing, firstly, they need to do what we call crop diversification. The other issue that they also need to do is to make sure that I mean, they plant crops that are tolerant to eat. They also need to, um, to make sure that I mean, they plant their crops earlier. Uh, than the normal, I mean, um, uh, planting season, just to counter whatever um, natural disaster that might hit, especially drought. For those who are uh, um, um, in the eastern regions, because of the um, rainfall patterns uh, uh, in that area, they they need to upscale um, their um, agricultural practices, which means that they need to go full scale to produce uh, more food. It could be, I mean, sort of a a basket region. Crop diversification, away from widespread maize production, can play a significant role alone in mitigating climate shocks. Switching from grain and fodder crops to high-value horticultural and industrial crops such as pecan nuts, macadamia nuts and citrus is one of the changes taking place. A lot of effort has gone into improving water use efficiency in irrigation by commercial farmers, but it is small-scale farmers who are most vulnerable to climate shocks. In particular, those who are dependent on rain for their crops rather than irrigation. Climate-smart innovations such as solar-powered irrigation pumps and affordable soil moisture sensors are becoming available but have not been introduced on a large scale yet. So we talk about scaling up and that's really how do we, how do we institutionalize climate smart agriculture into policy? How do we inform investment that promotes and supports such scaling? How do we scale out by reaching millions of farmers? And, and then also how do we scale deep? And that is really about addressing the systemic barriers uh, to inclusion, particularly for vulnerable groups like women and youth. Uh, engaged in the agricultural sector. We have to really spend time and energy on, on partnership models, innovative partnership modalities, recognizing the role of private sector, uh, the public sector, government, in being able to scale. Franz Mamkisi is a small-scale farmer in the Northern Cape province, utilizing flood irrigation. While short furrow flood irrigation is considered efficient, other flood systems like bed and basin flood irrigation are not considered efficient. We are predicting by the year 2030, we will have a 17% gap in terms of water availability in South Africa. So all sectors need to have a better approach in terms of how they utilize their water. 
Micro-irrigation, mechanized systems and sprinklers tend to be more efficient irrigation systems than flood irrigation. But not everyone can afford these technologies. Nonetheless, Mamkisi owns his one hectare farm and land ownership is one of the keys to food security. Secured property rights incentivize farmers to increase production efficiency. Irrigation can play a significant role in overcoming rural poverty and mitigating urbanization. Many more opportunities lie in irrigation for South Africa. The government plans to expand the area under irrigation by 34,000 hectares and is developing new dams and canals. Already, the existing Clan William Dam is undergoing a redevelopment to double its water capacity. Despite many challenges, the irrigation sector in South Africa continues to grow, offering hope for future food security in a semi-arid country.